In today's video, I want to walk through Earhart's developmental preemption assessments, four helpful categories that I see a lot when it comes to OT and pre-writing skills. But then also we want to expand on that and look at what are some other common writing grasp patterns, both that are functional and maybe not functional. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to know a variety of grasp patterns, when they emerge, and what are some that can be considered more functional for writing than others. Hey friends, welcome back to the OT Minute. My name's Arno. So let's start with Earhart's four classifications of pre-writing skills or grasps. The first is the Palmer supinate grasp. This develops between ages one to one and a half. I think of this as um, somebody just putting their palm out, putting a pencil right in the palm and grasping it. It's usually with supination, the fist, and then a little bit of flexion at the wrist. So this would be a kid usually drawing circles or something like this or scribbling with a crayon or something like that in this posture. Next, we've got the digital pronate grasp. This happens between ages two and three years of age. This is a grasp that you would get from simply picking up a pencil from the table as it was lying down. You get a little bit of extension on this finger, maybe a little bit on this as well. And then the drawing happens in a pronated uh, fashion. The wrist is usually in neutral uh, with a little ulnar deviation. Now very importantly, again, the arm at this stage moves as a unit. The third grasp is the static tripod grasp. This happens between ages three to four years of age. It's not quite mature yet, but we're getting there. It's where the thumb, the index, and the long finger is on the pencil or pen or crayon, whatever they're using. You've got a little bit of flexion when the ring and pinky fingers. The grasp isn't necessarily as refined. There's not precise opposition between the digits, so it may look just a little bit more awkward, but again, you're starting to see that classic tripod grasp emerging. And very importantly, the key word in this would be static because the fingers aren't dissociated from the wrist and the hand and the uh, rest of the upper extremity. So it also kind of moves as a unit and the wrist is a neutral, which is a big difference between this and the next writing grasp, which is the dynamic tripod grasp. This happens between ages four and a half to six years old. This includes the thumb, the index finger, and the ring finger resting on the pencil. See a little bit of extension at the wrist, and then there's more precise opposition, and a lot of the movement is coming from the PIP joints. There's a stable arch in the hand, and the fourth and fifth digits out of the way from where the movement's happening, which is with the thumb, the index, and the long finger. Now that we have the basic idea of the sequence of pre-writing grasp patterns and their development, and at what ages these skills generally start to appear. Let's look a little bit more at what are some other functional writing grasps. Now, to be fair, I imagine there are some variances as to what people may advocate for, but this list specifically comes from a free resource on grasp from Medbridge, uh, which I think is a great resource. I'll add a link below, so feel free to check that out. If you're interested in joining Medbridge for their awesome CEUs, their HEP creator, and so forth, I'll also include my affiliate code down below that gets you a huge discount on membership. Now, the mature grasp, as outlined on this Medbridge article, includes the dynamic tripod grasp, which we went over, but also includes the dynamic quadrupod grasp. Now, that's very similar to the dynamic tripod grasp, but now you're also seeing the ring finger resting on the pencil or the pen, whatever is being used. A big similarity between the dynamic tripod grasp and the dynamic quadrupod grasp is the web space. There's a nice web space usually as writing is happening, and you'll see that extension of the wrist. Next, we have the lateral tripod and the lateral quadrupod grasp. This is where the pencil or pen is resting between the thumb and the index finger, and so there's not a big web space now but it's still a functional grasping pattern. The quadrupod's similar, except with the ring finger involved. So again, it gives a good bit of stability and a good bit of control. And finally, another functional grasping pattern would be the adapted tripod. This is when the pencil is put between the index finger and the long finger with the tip of the thumb resting on it. And then this gives, again, a lot of movement via the fingers for writing. So it's a good bit of stability and control and can be functional as well. Now the mature grasp patterns that the article goes over is contrasted to immature grasp patterns, one of which we've gone over already, which is the static tripod grasp. But I do wanna cover a couple of these other ones 
that I think are common to see. The second one would be the interdigital grasp, which is when all the tips of the fingers are on the pencil or the pen, and we're seeing a lot of arm movement. It's not good dissociation and doesn't give us the same kind of control that a tripod or a quadrupod grasp would. And then finally, we have the lateral thumb wrap grasp. This is when the thumb wraps over the pencil and presses it against the index finger. Therefore, the finger helps to hold the pencil, but it's not helping to move the pencil, and so you're still seeing no dissociation between the fingers and the rest of the upper extremity when, it, when they're writing or drawing. I hope this was a helpful video going over the different types of functional grasp patterns as well as when some of them may emerge. If you found value in this video, don't forget to click the like button to let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want more OT related content like this. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.